What's going on everybody? Coming back to you guys again with another video. This is gonna be the Sunday night Q&A. So without further ado, let's get to those questions. Alrighty, and the first question is gonna be from Hanan Marie, who's another loyal subscriber. Hanan asks, what is your best and worst memory? Uh, best memory would have to be going to San Francisco uh, with my father when I was in eighth grade. Uh, we went to Fisherman's Wharf, had a really, really great time. And my worst memory, I would have to say, was probably my parents' divorce. That's a pretty personal subject for me, but uh, that's you know that's one of the worst times that I had to go through in my life. Went from Cody Vegas, who asks, how long can you hold a plank? I don't even know how long I can hold a plank. Team No Abs, checking in. And the next one's going to be coming from Survive the Vibe X, who says, "Have you done any mountain biking, or do you strictly only cycle?" I'm natty, bro. Seriously, no, really though. Uh, I actually have been contemplating getting a mountain bike. I've never been a huge fan of mountain biking, which is pretty funny considering that I started on my dad's mountain bike to get into road cycling. I remember getting up to one of the steepest climbs in my area and going, "Wow, this is really hard." I need a road bike, so potentially in the future I'll be getting a mountain bike. Alrighty, the next question is going to be coming from Andrea J18, who says, "What bike would you recommend for an amateur rider, uh, and what gear is necessary uh, besides the helmet?" Thanks, you are amazing. You're amazing too, Andrea. That being said, uh, a bike that I would recommend for a beginner for a road would be anything from Giant. Uh, Trek makes good bikes too. Granted, Giant makes most Trek bikes, but you know that's pretty uncommon to, to know about. So from that, you have to really expect to be around a few hundred dollars for your first real road bike. I mean, if you want to get something that's basic, expect to perform like a basic bike. If you want to get something that's a little bit more of a step up, get something that's well above a thousand dollars and expect to uh, put a few extra hundred bucks into it. And that's going to lead me into the next part of that question, which is going to be, there's more than just the helmet. You need the shoes, the pedals, all the uh, the nice belts and whistles that go with it too that are going to increase your ride quality overall. Alrighty, and the next question is going to be from Sarah HTSE who says, is the transition from being vegan to eating meat again really hard? Uh, this is actually a pretty good question too. I think this really just boils down to uh, your uh, stance on meat consumption rather than talking about it from a physical standpoint. On the body, I don't really think it's going to be that hard, but then again, that can really depend on how long you've been going without me. If you've been going for only a few weeks or a few months to going uh, to going back into eating meat again, uh, it really shouldn't be that hard. If you've been going on for years into uh, to a meat-filled diet, it's going to be probably pretty hard on your body. Uh, then again, going about it from an ethical side of it, uh, that's going to really vary depending on every individual. So. Alrighty, and the next question is going to be from Natalie Salavaka who says, where in the world do you want to travel? All places right now in the world that I would love to go to, it would either have to be England, Australia, or Switzerland or France, and you guys know why I'd love to go there. And no, it's not for the chocolate. And then next question is going to be coming from Ellen R. Fit who says, favorite 90s cartoon? That would have to be Ed, Ed, and Eddie. And the next question is going to be from Scarlet Ando who says, how often do you eat to maintain a speedy metabolism? Uh, I actually don't have a speedy metabolism. I have a high TDEE, which is essentially going to be your total daily expenditure. That being said, the whole 6 to 8 to 10 to 12 to 16 meal a day uh, myth that you need to eat that frequently is essentially just that. It's a myth. And most people that say that they have a high metabolism don't really have a high metabolism. They're either just extremely active or they're not eating as many calories as they think they are. Alrighty, and the next question is gonna be coming from Christine Vegan, who's also an, a loyal subscriber as well. She has a big question, so I'm gonna kind of paraphrase it a little bit. Many fitness YouTubers that I follow, especially those who count macros, praise the concept of calories in versus calories out as a means to lose weight. Uh, however, the vegan accounts uh, smash in over 3,000 calories of high carb, low fat foods, and are clearly eating more than they expend. At this point, I'm confused on what is the truth. What's your opinion if it is truly calories in versus calories out, and why do so many vegans who eat high carb, plant-based, stay lean and not gain weight? Thanks, Eric. Love you so much. Love you back, Christine. Uh, this is a great question again. I think that uh, this is something that's extremely important to uh, to look at right now with what's going on. Now, a lot of these fitness channels really are gonna be putting up videos of them smashing in a lot of food and uh, talking about how much they eat on a daily basis. They obviously want you to believe what they want you to believe. 
and uh, I'm gonna really be clear with this and uh, pretty straightforward in the sense that in my opinion they're not eating that much every single day to eat that much food over time whether it be 4,000 5,000 6,000 calories of these high carb, low fat, plant-based foods is gonna be extremely taxing on the human body uh, and unsustainable in my opinion. Granted, this is just my opinion. They're actually doing it every single day. They're doing it when they're filming videos. They're doing it to push their agenda and to uh, get their opinion out there for everybody. To the main part of your question, it still does boil down to calories in versus calories out, which is my point really. If they were expending 4,000 calories a day, taking in 6,000 calories a day, realistically, they'd be in a net surplus of 2,000 calories, which would result in more weight gain. The fact of the matter is, is that they're eating high carb foods. Uh, they're not really consuming that many calories. And the human body, essentially, when you are active, when you're riding your bike for multiple hours a day, or you're just, again, a really, really active person, you're gonna burn through that pretty quickly. And that's why I do preach a high carb diet for most people, because again, the human body, when you have that type of lifestyle, is very efficient at burning through glycogen, glucose, very, very efficiently. So that's just something to take into account. Alrighty, and the next one's gonna be from that sort of artist who's again, another subscriber as well, another loyal subscriber at that. What would you say you are passionate about? Would it be your cycling or something else? I would say I'm passionate about my job. Uh, a day like today where I had a really awesome day and uh, I made a lot of individuals happy. I've made a lot of kids happy when they get in their first real bikes. I would say I'm passionate about my job. Alrighty, and the next question is going to be coming from Pineapple Soul, who says, if you could go back in time, would you change anything? If so, why? I picked this question on purpose because it is pretty cliche, but again, I like this question. I get this question pretty much every time I post up my picture on Instagram for everybody to comment on about the Q&A. So I will say that hopefully to silence this question from being asked again, even though it will, I do not believe in the past and going back to the past to change things. Uh, we can always think about the past and wonder about it, but the fact of the matter is, is I'm where I am for a reason right now. Therefore, I would never change anything about my past. Well, alrighty guys, we are done with the Q&A. 10 questions for this week. Hopefully got some questions answered for you guys that you guys may have been curious about. And if you guys haven't already, feel free to follow my social media. All the links will be right there in the corner and in the description box. Snapchat, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You know the drill. And it would mean a lot to me if you guys gave the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And stay tuned for the next one. See you guys.